and three, two, one, boom. And we're back with another episode of Scratch Gamers. This episode brought to you by Zen Real Clothing Co. ZenRealClothingCo.com. Check it out. So, um, this, well, we're back to Scratch Dialogue, and I, I just finished reading um, the second installment in this, like, ancient, um, in, like, Book of Secrets? Ancient book of secrets, yeah, yeah, pretty much. You know what's funny? Like every book is a book of secrets because nobody reads books anymore. So yeah, they watch docs. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, fun fact: Did you know that the Library of Alexandria, they would any boat that would come in to the shores of Alexandria, they would take all the books, they would copy them, then they would give the books back. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and, and that's why it was like that. the biggest um, library. library in the world. Yeah, uh, and then it got burnt down during I forgot it was a Persian invasion I think so was and it the Persian invasion or some I think they had like a different name because like in the book they, they referenced somebody else this isn't from the book this is actually from that uh, Assassin's Creed walking tour oh or like was it walking tour yeah yeah, yeah okay it was called a walking tour that's so funny because around the world they have like walking tours like free walking tours uh, where they like tell you about places oh I don't know I mean I think so <laughs> You're, you are walking right true yeah. <laughs> I just assumed a journey, that. and then we like look at it. It's like a journey odyssey. We're like, oh wow, that was so wrong. But but yeah, um, so like um, with Wikipedia, they were actually trying to recreate that, mm-hmm. um, just like a digital version of uh, Library of Alexandria. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. But um, yeah, so after reading like all this like ancient stuff, and then like you studying you learning about and like exploring like animal culture and like different civilizations because you're the first you're the one who brought me to that um what was that the human great human migration Mm -hmm. check that out on bbc if you haven't seen it it's really awesome they talk about how we came out of africa and all that stuff and it makes sense as to why like a lot of religions carry the same um like parables yeah. like very similar parables like even uh, i just want to add it to a point like even if yeah we did come out of africa it's like it's also like mm, we would come like back and forth not necessarily in to africa I'm in, like in the middle east like maybe we'd go north and come back and then like you know what i mean like it's multiple right right so it's, it's multiple like, migrations yeah i see what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah. So because it's like it's uh-huh. it's adding layers to layers sometimes some stories will match from different areas it's like but how did that happen but it's just because they were it's not like only one migration right totally yeah yeah, yeah for yeah. sure um so, so this uh, Socratic dialogue is about the uh, pinnacle of spirituality, mm-hmm. and um, I kind of want to give away the secret, like <laughs> the end note right in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, so it's Zen, which is funny. Like that. That's where um, I'm like really into like the Zen real clothing, right? So like Zen is like the highest um, achievement. And you're probably thinking like, how do you know Zen's the highest achievement? Like, what, what do you mean? So like, we'll we'll get into it. So we'll. We'll like explore it further. I won't just give away the synopsis right away, but so, so there's like the stoned ape theory, right? Yeah. Where um, they believe that apes would eat these mushrooms that were prevalent in in like the um, the areas that they're in, and then that that increased their level of like conscious awareness to realize certain things and make grander patterns in their mind, mm-hmm. right? And those patterns allowed them to like think further right right and then other things like um uh like farming agriculture actually helped us think even further and what like created what we are today because instead of like hunting and gathering for your food you had more time like if you had a farm to Mm -hmm. like hoard that you know what i'm saying right so like it's really in our that's why they say like thinking is um uh it's a luxury or like it's only for the privilege privileged yeah that, that was what i was thinking of yeah it's only for privilege because it's like if you're if you're hunting and gathering all the time it's like how do you have time to think mm-hmm. you know what i mean that that's also like what creates like the poor staying poor and the rich staying richer because it's like they have more time to like separate themselves further right like a person a person who is living day to day paycheck to paycheck it's like they're not thinking of like how could they even advance? Yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean. Like they're they're just thinking about like work and then take care of the family and that's all. Yeah. So when you say like, oh, you should be more like enlightened in the way you think, it's like that's a privileged state to to be like that. Because even like the ancient animals, 
they were like that too, right? Because they needed, um, they needed the space to think, mm-hmm. where agriculture came in. But so, so what's interesting is like we all started with this idea of like our imagination, right? So you you would you would take like the mushrooms and then you would have this experience and then you're decoding your experience, mm-hmm. right? And like oftentimes that would be considered a religious experience, right? Because like. Like even through like meditation, like you'll you'll see like lights and sounds and meditation, and it's like, are those spiritual experiences? But they're spiritual experiences because you've told yourself they're spiritual experiences, right? You know what I mean? Like, what if they're just happenstance? What if they're just like a byproduct of what's happening, and you're attaching the narrative, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, um, like the the volcano gods, yeah, and like the Norse gods, right? What was yeah. the Norse gods like in the beginning? They, um, they had like associations to like physical things in our reality mm-hmm. like mount olympus it was just a giant mountain so like oh the gods yeah. must live up there right you know what i mean and like if you look into like uh roman roman stuff a lot of the gods took on like characteristic traits of us like there's the god of love the yeah. god of like um war mm-hmm. all these things right so it's like we get so caught up in what we don't know Okay. That we, we attach, like, our assumption. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Yeah. And, like, so would you say that through science we've been able to back that up? Like, we, we've been able to, like, eliminate some of those things. And, like, is science, like, the great purveyor of, like, what is real and what's not? Uh, in some ways, yeah. I mean, you still have limitations to how much... I mean, it all depends on the technology, right? Right, and so it's so funny that you said that because it's like, um, when you don't know something, you create a story for it. Yeah. So it's like the limitations in science create another dogma, yeah. which is like the scientific dogma now. You know right. what I mean? It's like, like what is quantum physics? Well, we don't know. Okay, so like we're gonna create these like theories, right? Mm-hmm. Essentially, it's like science. Science is like is a religion in itself because you're also producing theories that you're you're just testing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. any 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 hypothesis is an assumption. It's yeah. like a guess. Mm-hmm. So like so if you look at it back then their scientific tool was like analysis. So like if we killed a bunch of people and then it started to rain, then it's like a well, correlation. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But, like, now we know correlation is not causation. There's other things involved in there. Mm-hmm. But, like, that's kind of where they're coming from. Yeah. You know? Um, or there's, like, Mayans who, like, would slaughter that. Was it the Mayans? Actually, yeah, bringing that up, that was funny. I was watching that uh, finale of Succession yesterday, and they brought... There was a line about that. I wanted to bring that up somehow. Okay. And you brought it up. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, no, it's just, like, like the... The correlation, not causation? No, 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 not necessarily, but, like, just, like, they would... Um, like we view them as uh, like uh, um, barbarians or something like that, because when you the hear Asian like peoples? yeah yeah totally okay, like when yeah. you hear like oh they they killed their sons or whatever yeah for to get rain or something but it's it's it was more it's more like um yeah uh it's like what would you give up what would you be your most loved thing that you would give up to get you know what I mean oh so it's like an analogy yeah oh interesting you know there's a there's a story about that um. I think it's like Abraham. Well, yeah, I mean, it's more, yeah, exactly. It's, it's similar to that, right? Like he was supposed to kill his son, and yeah. then at the last second before killing his son, God appeared and was like, yeah. oh, you do love me. And it's kind of like... Well, it's, oh, not, it's not about that. It was more like God. to survive, right? To to get the rain, the rain gods to oh, rain. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So it was saying. like to, to... What's the show called? Succession. Okay, and well, what's it about? Is it about this? Like, you're you're intriguing me. I'm like, oh, I should watch that. Uh, It's not about that, no. It's, oh. a, it's just, it's like um. Uh. You can. It's like a rich family in a business that. It, it's so many things have happened. It's. It's about this family, and then it's not. It's not as. So it's not really about religion. It okay, no, okay. it's not about religion. Oh, okay, but okay. he he was bringing that up, um, in context to what was going to happen in the show. Okay. Because he had to. Uh, something came up in, with the company that was all these, um, uh, bad things. So someone has to be the sacrifice. Right. 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 And he was talking to his son. When he was saying that, there's a spoiler right now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so that's why he brought that up. Right. It's like I now we understood what they meant. Right, 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 like right, to, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's fascinating. It's like, like we we ultimately suffer from these things, and yeah. it's like, what will we, 
what will we do to alleviate our suffering from it? So like the the oldest text, I know you like you're like uh, questionable on this, but like scientifically the oldest text that we have so far is the Sumerian text, and in that that's where Gilgamesh is. Um, he's the story of Gilgamesh, and like mm-hmm. the whole parable is like he's in search of like overcoming death. So if he can find this place, I think I think it's a place. Um, then he can like live forever, and it's like yeah, that's that's our biggest fear. Like, for if our oldest text shows us that we're afraid of dying, then everything yeah. is like associated with like escape from death. Like Wait, even today, yeah. Yeah. that story is also in, in in Hinduism too, I believe. Someone yeah, but that but that I've makes sense as that. to why it's yeah. the, it was because it was like it's the oldest one, and then you can see like fractals of it. No, no, I know, I know, I know, I know, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so like um, yeah, so there's that one. Um, and it's it's weird it's weird how like we'll we'll attach so much mm-hmm. you know to something we know little about like um like okay so and and it's it's interesting how our stories will evolve because of those things yeah. so like there was a climate change event that happened in England that they know now it was just like i think it was like just the time so like for 4 years it was a lot colder so it was like a global colding. Yeah. Right? Cooling? Um, cooling, yeah. Okay. Global cooling, yeah. Sorry, colding. Uh, it, was, it was a global cooling. And like from that, yeah. it's global cooling is worse than global warming because at least in warm climates, you can still have some something survive. But if yeah. it's too cold, it can't survive, right? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of things were dying and like mm-hmm. plagues were coming about. This was during like the, the night's time, right? And mm. from that came the story of King Arthur because that was why he was searching for the Holy Grail. He had to undo... There was like some great spell or something, and like he had to undo this um, this global cooling, but they didn't know it was global cooling. They just thought it was like, you right. know, like oh, a witch came and we need to stop. You <laughs> right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like it's fascinating from that perspective too, because it's like it it's like we're all just telling ourselves stories, mm-hmm. you know. So that yeah, we're I mean uh, that's that's the. Um, the oldest thing about humans is like we've been always telling stories, right? That's right, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because what else do you do when you're around a campfire except tell stories? Exactly. You know, um, so so that's so that's the first stage in it. We we see something in life, and then we're this is like the beginning stage of spirituality, where yeah. it's like we see something, we don't know what it is, so we hypothesize, and then we create like like. I don't know how to explain it better than like it's an assumption Mm -hmm. like it's like a naive assumption is what spirituality really is Mm -hmm. you know it's like well I need to connect more it's it's like things you can't really you can't articulate it but you can feel it right right so it's like we don't really know why this global cooling is happening so if we like sacrifice a bunch of people or we go on a quest it's like maybe that'll alleviate it see it's like a naive assumption uh yeah see what I'm saying um so there's that aspect to that. And then from that, we started to get, like, people who were just really great talkers. Mm-hmm. Or people who, like, saw something that other people didn't. So it's like, if you understood that... Okay, like, if you didn't understand... Like, let, all right, let, let's say you're, like, walking, and you keep hitting your head as yeah. you're walking. And you're like, but the lights are off in the room and you keep walking towards something, you keep hitting your head. You don't see the, the opening, mm-hmm. right? And then somebody who's who can see in the dark is like, hey, just duck your head a little bit and you can walk right through. Right. Like it's like a very simple yeah, solution. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, wow, you must be an enlightened being. Mm-hmm. So now we're, now we're moving into zones of like people with different perspectives that are applicable towards all aspects of humanity. And then like, maximizing and capitalizing on that right. you know that's where the whole like people of the book thing came came from right mm-hmm. um like moses was the jewish like um like i don't want to say superhero but he was like the <laughs> the, the idol right he's yeah, the yeah. one who knew everything right and he was the chosen one and then jesus mm-hmm. was for christians or catholics and then oh, muhammad yeah, Christians and Catholics. Oh, Christians you said or, and. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. Or or Catholics. I said or. Oh. Like, it could be both. Like, you know, yeah. they're, they're essentially the same tribe, just mm-hmm. different belief systems. True. Just like a slight alteration. And then like Muhammad is the one for Muslims. Yeah. Right? So you have like 
like, let's not think of them as deities. Let's think of them as if they're humans. Like, all right, so they're humans. They've just come up with these insightful perspectives that they're sharing with other people. Mm -hmm. And from that, you get, like, people who who understand what you're saying, and then they follow you. But then if you look at it, a lot of them will say, actually, if you read, like, the the Catholic Bible, which I did, he started to go, like, power-hungry at a certain point, which Mm -hmm. is a little weird. After the Sermon on the Mount, um, he would, he, like, there was, like, this, this evident point that, like, he started turning towards, like, you should follow me. Right. Um, it's susceptible to all humans. You get power hungry, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so, like, from there, other forms of spirituality are born, which is, like, this person has the answer. Right, yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, but the problem with that is that you you develop cults, right? Mm-hmm. So it's funny because if you actually go into, like, like reading more about it or you visit these places, they'll say, like, the cult of Apollo, the cult of, um, yeah. you know, but it's like, because they knew they were cults, mm-hmm. but, like, now we call them the religion of this, the religion of that. Yeah. But it's they're following the same structure. Mm-hmm. I remember, like, um, I've told this before, but, like, when I was in grade, like, super young, mm-hmm. like, early grade, like, four, maybe, three, four, something like that. Yeah. I was like, I think it was like during our first baptism and like, we were like, oh, um, we're learning about God and like what it means to be Catholic. And I was like, well, what's the difference between a cult and a religion? Because mm-hmm. wouldn't you say that we are a cult because we have the same practices? We sacrifice things just like cults. Right. You know, we <laughs> have like the sacrifice of reconciliation or whatever. And mm-hmm. like, you know, so... Yep. So from that, it's like, even a child can tell you, like, this seems a little off. Right. But, like, you you believe in the person because it's like, we need to, um, we need to alleviate our suffering mm-hmm. by putting the onus not on ourselves, but on other people. Right? Like, if we follow this person, one day we'll achieve, he'll, he'll free us of our suffering. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And like, and from that, um, from that religion was born. And that that's where you have like Hinduism, you have uh, Catholicism, you have like Taoism's in that too. Like everyone, everyone's looking for an answer outside of themselves. Mm-hmm. Right? So then there's that stage. So we, we start off with like the spiritual naivety, which is like you'll see something, you have no science, so you're just going to assume and then you have the next stage, which is like you have these certain outliers that are telling you things that make a lot of sense. Yeah. And then they go power hungry and they're like, follow me. Right. Or or they don't even go power hungry. They just start creating them into like these deified beings. Sort of like the Dalai Lama of today. Mm-hmm. It's like, like what level of life experience do you have other than being surrounded by other people that call you a special being? Yeah. See what I'm saying? So it's like, if you spend your entire life being called your special being, what kind of related life experience would you have towards my daily life? Mm-hmm. You can't tell me to like, don't worry about it. You haven't been through it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, ultimately, all experiences are different. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, and then from that, we get Buddha. Yeah. Who like, who was like, he was Hindu, and then he was like, okay, I'm not going to, I don't like this caste system, I don't like all these aspects of it, because he was, like, pampered, right? He was, like, he was, like, the Dalai Lama of the day. It's, like, I'm gonna be, like, well, he wasn't spiritual, but he was, like, he was, like, prince. Yeah. Right? So, like, you were sheltered, and then you were, you were studied and all that, but, like, you didn't see, like, suffering. And mm-hmm. then, having seen suffering, he had, like, a freaking nervous breakdown. Yeah. And then went on this giant quest of asceticism to, like, let go of his suffering. Yeah. Right, right, right. right. Um, and then from that, he came up with, like, the middle the middle way, which is, like, not too hot, not too cold. Just don't go, you know, like, really keep your have-no-attachments, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And become, like, if you, if you have no attachments or no desire, then you're like you're out avoiding suffering yeah 
right? Yeah, true. But like, doesn't that kind of seem like a like a half half empty way to live? Yeah, that's. You could say you're like yeah. cutting yourself off, right? Yeah. Um, you had that story about the Buddha's son. I did. Remember, like he brought his son in the like follow my monastery, and then like the son like hated him. Uh, it's been so long. <laughs> All right. Well, um, you, you had this like story of like the Buddha had a son, and then like when he put his son in the school the son's oh, like oh. you oh you like, experience all these things yeah but you're like cutting me off yeah right. from the jump so it's like you want me to be like you but I didn't get a chance to like see the world mm-hmm. right that's, oh yeah, yeah yeah right right. which is again that's like that's the way that's, that's the ascetic way you're like gonna cut yourself off from these things because like desire is not good so just desire nothing but you, yeah, exactly. You've experienced it, so why can I experience what you? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like he was trying to like save his son, like the time and effort of having to go through all that. But it's like yeah. it's sort of like people who are like, um, like, oh, find what you love to do, blah blah. blah. But it's like, I mean, I say that too. But it's like mm-hmm. you, you have to find your own path to your own truth. Like the right, the right, right path is my path. You know, not literally my path, but like from your own perspective, it's like whatever you do, that's going to be your path. Right. Toward, if you feel better, then you create a path towards feeling better. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody, because everyone's experiences and perspectives are different. There's no one correct, one size fits all. Yeah. But what the Buddha was trying to do was like yeah. put in this box. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But and he like, found, yeah. He found that one way that he should work for everyone or something. And yeah. And that's creating problematic right there right yeah and it's and now now if you look at it backwards it's um, like one stage down mm. and the people that hear him they're like well you have an enlightened perspective we're going to follow you and you're going to become a deity right even though he said like don't follow me yeah but like see even there like he didn't want to be followed but you're being followed mm-hmm. you know um, and then from that well, the, Zen was born from that because, like, there's this parable of this person, allegedly, like, during Buddha's final, um, final, mm, like, lecture or, like, one of his m- most important lectures. And then, like, everyone, oh, no, here, here's the exact story. So, like, he's like, okay, meet here and then I'm going to tell you guys something amazing. So, everyone, like, met up. They're like, oh, the Buddha hasn't spoken in so many years, so we're going to, like, go. And then all he did was he sat there looking at a flower. And then one person, like, started laughing. And then he's like, bring this person up. And then he's like, you understand. So, he, like, gave him the flower or something like that. Mm-hmm. But, like, from that, it's like Zen was born allegedly through like the lineage of it like that guy created zen right but we're not going to delve into that yet okay so so then there's so then from the asceticism you get like tantra which is like you you indulge in everything Mm -hmm. right you instead of like cutting yourself off from the world it's like you you indulge in everything in order to overcome everything it's like you see your desire you you indulge so you see your desire so that you can like um fight over your desire okay you know so so it's like it's like the son of buddha like being like how come i can't how come i have to cut myself off from the jump so like the opposite way is like okay just go on the buddha's path like go do everything and then that will be your lesson to overcome Mm -hmm. see what i'm saying yeah um but even in that it's like you're still using these like like it's it's still incomplete because like in doing that you can fall into like you can like trick yourself into like thinking oh I'm going to like do everything in this world like yeah. I'm going to go out and like do a bunch of drugs why because I'm like tantric you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. so it's like now you're too far off the other spectrum one one side it's like I'm really ascetic I'm not going to do anything and the other side it's like I'm going to do everything Right. You know, but then it's like, but if you're going to do everything, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, like, again, it's, like, these people, like, searching for ways to give themselves meaning or alleviate their suffering. Right. Do you, do you agree? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as you were saying, there's it's doing the... It's, it's doing what Buddha did, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. 
because yeah. now it's indulging in everything. Cause right. Like, but then I think I, in that way, I, I get it. But it's like, but also, but that was looking for something, right? Yeah. He was on a, on a direction. He was in a direction. Right, right, right. But right, when right. Their, their direction, I feel like it's just to, is to do that, is to do the Tantra. Where that's not the direction he was going in. Oh, oh right, right. I see what you're saying. Like his end mission wasn't that, right? Wasn't but, but, but that's why I say it's slippery. It's like some people will do everything because they're like, well, we got to live it up. But it's like, but you don't realize you're doing everything in order to like mm-hmm. quell something. Yeah. You know? Right. Like if they're like, um, if they're like, oh man, my life would be better if I did this. And then they go do it. And it's like, oh, I'm unhappy still. Okay, well, my life would be better if I did this. So you start, like, you start, like, pursuing things in order to fill yeah. a void. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Ultimately, you're, like, you're fulfilling your suffer. You're trying to, like, fill a void, which is your void of suffering. Mm-hmm. Right? So, so we have, so now we have the levels of, like, um, the naive spirituality, which is, like, we have no science, so we're just going to make up stuff. Then you have, like, the cult followings. And then from that, you have, like, the ascetics. And then from that, you have, like, the we'll do everything's, right? So this is why I like okay. I like Zen, because, like, Zen is, like, why are you even thinking about any of that? Mm-hmm. Right? It's like, it's, like, when you don't think about those things, then you are just doing things. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, like, it's like just live your life. If you if you are suffering, you're suffering. If you're not suffering, you're not suffering. If you're happy, you're happy. If you're not, but ultimately, if you if you absorb fully into that, there is no happy, sad, suffering, no suffering because you're you're so absorbed in your task mm-hmm. that then, like like it's essentially flow states, right? Yeah. Which is what like a lot of um, scientists are big on right now. They're all into like meditation because they're like, oh, if you meditate, you can enter into a flow state, right? But like, but when when people say like, my life is a meditation, they're not actually. That that's really what it is because it's like you you can sit there and just meditate and enter into a flow state, or you can play video games and enter into a flow state, or you can uh, go for a walk and enter into a flow state. Right. right. See what I'm saying? It's yeah, like to, whatever flow, you're doing. Yeah. It, that's when your entire life becomes a meditation. Mm-hmm. Right, because you're not trying for anything; you're just doing, and that's why they say like, the way is so simple, but it's so hard. It's so simple because like, just do whatever you're doing, but it's so hard because the mind will kick in like, should I be doing this right now? Shouldn't I be believing in a deity? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but yeah. then yeah, I guess, but everyone's on a different timeline, right? Right, and that's that that that's so okay. So. Um, it's interesting how it's like everything goes full circle, right? You start off with being like, I need to alleviate the suffering. So you go on this whole journey. Like you you, you go on this whole journey to transcend, mm-hmm. right? You start off where you are and you're like, I need to tr- transcend my experience. Right. And then you go on this whole like four-step path to like come back to where you are mm-hmm. where it's like, oh no, I don't need to transcend anything because my experience is my experience. You didn't really transcend your life. You just looked at your life in a different way yeah right which ultimately is what enlightenment is it's enlightenment's perspective it's like if i understand that this is a finite experience i will treat it differently yeah you know what i mean if i understand that there are other people outside of myself i will treat it differently yeah right if i understand that there are things between science mm-hmm. and things that are not scientific at all i will treat it differently yeah right but when you said like there's like like people are in different stages so what what i think of it is like it's just a toolbox sometimes you use okay. zen sometimes you use religion sometimes you use like so like uh, personal story so like i had i had to get this like cavity filled. this was years ago i did this cavity filled, but i knew it was all in my head but i was like all right god why are you letting this happen mm-hmm. you know like don't let this happen god and it's like but i knew there was no god but it's like i needed the tool yeah you know, yeah. it's just toolboxes, tools and toolboxes. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what, you know, spiritual spirituality ultimately gives you. It's like, how do you overcome your suffering? Well, there are a myriad of ways. Choose one. Okay, I see what you're saying. Right? Yeah. Use the different tools. Or use the different tools. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, the highest achievement 
is to realize you don't need the tool. Mm-hmm. But we all need tools. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, some days you're going to be like, I need a beer right now. You know, mm. like, yeah. some days I need to just veg out on the, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. true self care is like, adapting to what it is you need in that moment yeah you know not just living your life statically because we don't live in a static existence we're always changing right our moods are always changing you know yeah and it's like yeah hmm yeah that, that's a good point <laughs> yeah I don't know I just like vibing really really heavy with that recently because like it's like because I know, like, when I when I post stuff, it's, like, very, like, it's, like, well, do you believe in this or do you believe in this? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like sometimes if I talk about chakras or if I don't talk about chakras, it's, like, so do you believe in chakras or you don't believe in chakras? Mm-hmm. Do you believe in this or you don't believe in this? Yeah. It's, like, no, it's a toolbox, bro. Like, just pick and choose what tools you need in that moment. And, like, because yeah. ultimately it's like, it's, like, stories. Like, these tools are just stories, like, self-reminders, you know? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you need to wear that power mala when you're doing something difficult. You know, that's what like amulets are for. Like the Egyptians used to like wear amulets to overcome like things or give themselves strength. And it's like, yeah, that's real if you believe it to be real. Yeah. But yeah, placebos are real. Placebo. It's placebo. It is placebo. But placebo, placebos are real. That's the thing. Yeah, placebos are real. Yeah. yeah. But they're also not real. See what uh, I'm saying? It's yeah. like, it's all in your head. Like the actual yeah, yeah. item isn't real, but the, the, um, side effect is real yes you know yeah but that but that's what that's why i like like taoism and zen because like it's all in paradoxes Mm -hmm. right so like that's why i find it so fascinating even like uh einstein said like the the religion of the future is gonna be buddhism because it's all about studying the mind but einstein didn't hit zen where it's like well you need both you know you need to fake it sometimes and you need to not fake it sometimes you know um well he was focusing on how to figure out the universe that's true yeah yeah <laughs> but but so yeah. so like um that that's why I like zen being paradoxes because when you hear it so like they're like logically they're like logical paradoxes mm-hmm. that's how i that's how i view them right it's like placebo all right are placebos real they're both real and not real yeah and then somebody's gonna be like well that's paradox can't be both real and not real but it's like a logical paradox yeah mm-hmm. it is real if you believe it to be real but it's also not real because the item itself is not gifting anything. Yeah. Right. But the effect is the same. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So this was what you got from the book? No, this, this is from, like, just studying everything. But it, it like, jo- jogged my memory oh, reading I the see, book. Because I, I was I like, see. people go on, like, these crazy, like, crusades or they'll, like, kill other people for this stuff. And it's like... Oh, you were talking about that, right? Yeah, like, yeah, there yeah. was no, um, like, the treatment that we talk about now like between uh peoples mm-hmm. is way different than what it was not that long ago right wait wait, wait. Oh, sorry sorry treatment like oh, oh uh, the like way we the, treat others yeah, like yeah, yeah. Treat others. yeah, yeah. i think about treatment i was like what 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 no, I meant, medical like, <laughs> no yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the way yeah i told all right so like that great example of like when people are like oh we need to elevate our consciousness become enlightened become so you like, think that was maybe that may have affected the why religion would be there because it's like it was so ridiculous it was, yeah because no no but because you know, life could be very short. A hundred percent. Yeah. So, so, so there's, um, there's this like line, there's no atheists in foxholes, mm-hmm. right? If you look at every MMA fighter, they're believing in some sort of God Yeah. because they're in a freaking foxhole. Like it's so dangerous doing what you're doing and like being in that space, you know, it, it again, privileged state, right? Like they weren't yeah. privileged to like be safe. Mm-hmm. So they couldn't really go beyond their um their like tool they're like level in the freaking hierarchy or, yeah 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 right um but like so like that story of um when people are like oh you should become more enlightened as a species and we should treat each other better it's like you just didn't look into history because like there's that that story where like the opposing army he ordered them to be blinded and then the last person had to blind himself so he had one eye and then they would like hold onto each other's backs and then they'd walk back to the camp so that the person could like the the general could see like oh this just happened to your army and this can happen again Mm. you know what i mean like we had no we had no like 
the concept of like other people you know yeah yeah, yeah. so it's like it's so like, it makes of more of course s- you would need some you're know, like yeah what a deep like all right another good example so the huns were just like this uh turkish tribe i think they're like yeah. more close to asian than like um european something mm-hmm. like that but anyway so like they so rome at the time was believed to be the, the city of god because that's where like the pope resided so yeah. like when the huns declared that they're going to go after rome they didn't see the huns as like humans anymore they're like demons are coming to attack us right. and it's like yeah because you can't log you're in a state of panic and fear you can't like really absorb these things mm-hmm. you're gonna need a lower level tool at that point it's like when i had the cavity and it's like i'm gonna need to use god right now because i'm a, i'm in a stage where i can't think logically so i need a toolbox you know right right i guess that's really what it is like your baser level of emotion at that point mm-hmm. you know if, if you're like vibing out life at like a lower level then it's like you will need a lower level toolbox it's closer to your survival mechanism so you're going to create something on that scale mm-hmm. at that time period right you know the time period of like not really knowing because they mm-hmm. were all living in fear but yeah. then now that people are like not living in fear like during the zen zen revolution it's like a lot of people were it was like already after the fact like we were at a peace time you still yeah. had like samurai but like you know you you had moments to think yeah right yeah yeah i mean uh, but i don't want to give it like as if it's something is lower necessarily right okay because it's just it's where you are in the totem pole. yeah but totem poles are built up well i don't think so it's like, i don't want to say i don't even have that too then right so it's like a circle yeah it's just which wherever you know, you're at you know it's co- no... you know it's ironic about zen symbol the zen symbol is a circle okay because where you start is where you're going to end up yeah so <laughs> that's that's the whole like idea behind it it's like you 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 hit this point mm-hmm. when you're young you start creating separation barriers right you're like what am i going to do when i grow up whoa does everyone have everything figured out? Like all this doubt starts coming in. Right. So you spend your whole life in search of some answer only to realize like you were, you didn't leave. Mm-hmm. Like you go on a quest to become enlightened, you come back enlightened and it's like, you're still dealing with the same damn problems. Right. But just through a different lens, you're like looking at a new perspective. And I think that's why they say like everyone's enlightened. Cause like you're enlightened to something, mm-hmm. you know, cause enlightenment is just perspective. Right. Right, it's like, just what are you enlightened about? Okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like to like, all right. So, so to a child who knows nothing, right? Mm-hmm. To a child who knows nothing, oh, it, it's sort of like that story. Well, pause before we go into that example, but uh, it's sort of like uh, Carl Jung said, like we eat from the tree of knowledge, right, mm-hmm. to become conscious. Yep. Yeah. Right. So Adam and Eve were unconscious. They became conscious through eating from the tree of knowledge. Then they, be, they have to become super conscious to realize that it's all in their head. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to do all this work to realize, like, your consciousness is ultimately victimizing your experience. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so it's sort of like this. So, like, like, you have, like, a little kid. And then to be like, oh, mom and dad are enlightened because they know more than me right Mm -hmm. yeah but their perspective is that there's a ghost out there that's like watching over you Mm -hmm. right and then so that's your that that is like you're enlightened to something yeah all right there is a ghost out there right but then when you do like more and more research you realize oh no the ghost is in your head so you've become like even more enlightened than your previous enlightenment okay so it's like there is no like i guess you can say that there's no because you're like, oh, there's no hierarchy enlightenment. Yeah, you're right. Because, like, what if there's something else out there that's, like, um, like, what if we find out through science? It's like, no, if we just remove this one part in our brain, mm-hmm. then we won't even be thinking about this anymore. Right. And then I become even more enlightened. Then it's like, oh, no, I just have to overcome my, um, like, why am I even thinking about these things? Right? That's what I said. Like, mm-hmm. Zen is, like, the highest point where it's like, why are you even thinking about it? Yeah. Well, then, to be even more enlightened than that, it's like, okay, just 
let's surgically remove this part of our brain so we don't even have to think about it. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, there's like always going to be some sort of enlightenment happening. Or like you'll read a book and you're like, I didn't know about this. Like, you know, enlightenment's a process. I guess that's why they say like enlightenment's the work of enlightenment because you're always finding out about something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And to be an enlightened being, it's like, just somebody who doesn't know as much as you you will always be an enlightened being to them yeah, yeah you know like a five-year-old thinks freaking mommy and daddy are enlightened beings but then like a phd like professor is like oh mommy and daddy aren't enlightened beings i'm an enlightened being you know what I mean? it's like mm-hmm. what right yeah <laughs> yeah but then so then that's why i wrote those articles about like enlightenment and then satori which is like satori is like when you're so into something um you you stop no sorry sorry satori is enlightenment zazen is where you're not even thinking about it yeah because yeah, yeah. you're so absorbed in your thing right right you have no time to think all of your faculties are being used in this one task mm-hmm. so you're you don't have time to think about anything else right you know i wonder if that's why people get addicted to war too addicted to war yeah because they come back after war you know like the, Do they only know that right but 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 like in that moment it's like we have one objective everything seems so clear you know don't mm-hmm. think about anything think about the mission survive 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 and then you come back and you're like okay well taxes okay what about mortgages and you're like what are all these thoughts oh uh, yeah because the yeah you get used to one thing right yeah, it's it's simple. Like and life is simpler on the battlefield. Yeah, it, no, that, that's for anything, right? You get used to one thing in a repetitive way that it that's becomes easier, right? Yeah. If anything new pops in, it's like it's it's more difficult to deal with. Totally, and totally, yeah. And you just want to go back to what you're good at or what you were good at because because the mm-hmm. mind hasn't interjected yet. Because in that thing, it's become so so flow like. Yeah. You know, you don't have to think. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like I remember when I when I used to work at the bakery, this was like one of the first encounters of Zen, but I didn't know it was Zen. But like I'd be like sweeping and I was like, Wow, this is such a peaceful experience. Or mm-hmm. like I'd be like making like packing the bread and I was like, Oh, yeah. this is such a peaceful experience, you know? Because yeah. you, but I had to train myself to think that because it's like, are you at eight hours to like pack this bread <laughs> and like sweep the thing? You know, it's like these are mundane tasks, but it's like you find the miracle of the mundane. Yeah. You know. Right, right, right. Yeah, I think that happened. Maybe that happens to a lot of people, right? But they don't realize they're doing. No, a hundred percent. Like fishermen, you know. Like, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, I you know no, I agree. I was gonna yeah. say like, <laughs> I think like, like simple. Simple tasks are where it's at. Like, I think if you just get caught up in your own experience, that's when issues start happening right you know just to realize like no there's a bigger world out there you don't really matter even though that's negative so it's like here's the logical paradox again yeah. it's like you don't matter but you do matter mm-hmm. hey, i said this thing like you matter less than you know no you matter more than you think and less than you know right because it's it's like well but how can i be both and it's like yeah because you do matter more than you think because you are having this experience and less than you know because you're still a part of like this grand thing. Yeah. So it's like you are special but also not special. Yeah. If every what was that? If every snowflake is a unique slow fake, then they're not unique slow flakes. They're just snowflakes. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So I guess um what about your experience? And um that's all all about your experience if it sucks right now it sucks right now if you believe in these deities you believe in these deities if you don't you don't like the um the great way is we're all like in like the great the Tao. Mm -hmm. the great way is we're already on our way it's only the delusion that thinks we need to change anything okay right but i guess even Mm -hmm. the delusion person is still in their own way yeah yeah because you read a lot about that. It's like, everything is perfect how it is. This is the way it is. Mm-hmm. You can't take anything away from it. Like, if you read all these, like, spiritual Zen books, it's like, everything's already perfect. Why are you trying to change it from being perfect? Right. Like, that, that's, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. whole, that's, the, like, the primary lesson. Like, every single thing is about that. Just ways to get to it. Or it's like, you're thinking too much. Or, like, do this. Mm-hmm. You know, like, they're just, like, 
ways of thinking, ways of approaching the problem in your mind in order to realize that everything is as it should be. It is what it is, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... And in Sherlock, when he lost his wife, um, when John Watson lost his wife, the only thing that saved him is he kept saying it is what it is. Because that's what it, that is, yeah, what yeah, it yeah. is. Like, yeah. Zen is like the epitome of acceptance. You just accept everything. Because that is, like, obviously you work towards changing it. There's the logical paradox again. It's like, well, if you accept everything, can you change things? Like, yeah, you can change things. Mm -hmm. But you also can't change things. Like, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Levels, levels to it. Right. Yeah. All right. So next week, do you believe in fate? Uh, Fate is what you make of it. (laughs) I'm going to go, I believe in fate. Because I believe in mathematics uh unless you're terrence howard <laughs> and it's all wrong yeah. uh yeah yeah in some way i guess sure right because I mean, cause know. and effect it's not something i think about so but like all right if we launch the thing about it it's like cause and effect if there is a cause to something then there's no random so there is no room for deviation yeah no i get it i get it yeah i get it just think too much all right. Yeah. So next week we're checking out EGLX. That's what it is, right? EGLX. ELGX or EGLX. ELG, one of those. One things, of those. One some, of those. Something new that we've the never first. Been to. Uh, yeah, I've never been to it. Um, Where did you see this? Like, uh, you know, the Google Ads ways. The way. They really? Do. I think so. Wow, that's awesome. Didn't expect that. They actually work, huh? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna check out um, that gaming convention, and we'll report back. Hopefully, it's dope. I believe it will be. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, you believe it will be? Okay. I believe it will be. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm going in with, I don't know. You're, or you're just going to go in Zen. You're going to be like, it is what it is. That's true. Yeah. Probably end up being like Right? That. And I'm going to go in with the desire. I'm going to go in with Tantra being like, all to me is going to be everything. Right. <laughs> yeah. True. All right. So until next time. Um, pickups and teas on Zen Real. ZenRealClothingCo.com. Yes. And take this philosophy with you wherever you go. See how I put that together? That's right. All right. Till next time. Take it easy. Peace.